Bienvenue into same but different. How is everybody doing? Welcome on into the finale of July, eh, ya hosers, where we watched Canadian-made movies all month long. I'm Brody, and over here we have Derek, my brother and my talk show partner. And we are here <laughs> to do a double feature for the end of the month where we watched Crazy and we watched I've Heard the Mermaids Singing. Let's hop right into these reviews. It's been an awesome month. Canada Pride. Woo! Yeah. And always remember, spoiler alert. Okay, let's do this. So here's my review, my honest review on Crazy, C-R-A-Z-Y, what I liked about the movie. So it's a nice little story about family. I really do like the idea that it's a story about family. It gave me, you know, a Christmas story vibes. A lot of things are going on, but at the core... It's just a family growing old. Like, you're growing up with this family. I like seeing everybody's individual story, how it relates to the family. I like seeing them grow over time, the strengthening or weakening of the relationships. By the time you reach the end of the film, so much time has passed, everyone's gotten older, you feel like you've been part of this family. It's, it's a cool feeling. Acting was good. I liked the acting a lot. It was very natural and real. It felt like I was watching interactions between siblings and, and parents. It was really cool to watch that. Standout actor, I must say, though, in my opinion, was the father figure in the family. I think his acting was absolutely incredible through all the ups and downs that he had with his children, in particular, the main character, Zach. Did you know that actor died only like two months ago? Oh, no. That's sad to know bring you down for a second thanks for that let's keep going all right moving on let's pay respects to the man he's amazing in this movie i really liked the uh the little reveal at the end because throughout the whole movie i was like why is this movie an acronym what does it stand for what's going on patsy klein song crazy okay fine but that's not an acronym why are we why the dots why, why are we doing this and then we get it and it's so cool that he named his kids that way each letter of crazy is the first initial of one of his sons is uh just to clarify yeah yeah exactly one of the final moments at the end where he hugs his dad goodbye after the brother dies that got me <laughs> got me weak in the knees man i was just oh that was so good such a good moment so so far it sounds like you really liked this movie derek <laughs> <laughs> That's what I liked about it, but the the bad outweigh the good, so. That's insane, because those were really strong goods. I'm curious. Let's hear it. It took filmmaking risks, which I really appreciate, but unfortunately, because of these risks, it felt like the movie didn't know what kind of vibe it wanted to give, you know, between the slow motion and him floating up in the church and then that weird cgi shot of like going out the window in the desert there's just a bunch of like weird filmmaking choices that didn't necessarily have either motivation or a consistent feel to them it felt like several different filmmakers got their hands into this movie i wanted to choose a path <laughs> Like, I absolutely 100% knew this was going to be a gripe of yours. Oh, really? As soon as like it happened for the third or fourth time, I'm like, man, Derek's going to hate this. <laughs> it just needed, <laughs> I knew it. It just needed to be consistent because I liked each individual choice. It's just together in a movie, it wasn't cohesive, and I, I didn't like that. Something you probably already know that I hated, the narration. I'm not a huge fan of narration in movies unless it serves the story for some purpose, but I felt for the large portion of this movie, the narration did not serve. There were long bits of narration where the camera was just on somebody laying down or looking off into the distance or watching TV or something. I was like, what? they could be showing us this in flashbacks. That would be cool. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of flashbacks to give us exposition either, but it's way better than narratives. The weird story element about how his family thought he could heal and he was some sort of Jesus figure, not really poignant in the story or the plot at all. Like, I feel like it didn't need to be there. I really wanted them to lean into it when his brother was sick. I think they mentioned it once, but I really would have liked them to lean into it a lot to make it worthwhile. If you took it out of the movie, it wouldn't have changed the movie at all. You're 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 absolutely correct with that one. Okay, cool. Finally, the movie felt like it was four hours long. Balancing out the good and the bad, that's just it. They balance out. So I'm giving this straight down the middle of five out of ten. Okay, a five. That's 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 okay. Mm -hmm. You do what you, you like what you like, man. What did you feel about it, bro? Tell me. Tell me your review. Nice. Well, same but different, that's for sure. Yeah, I figured. Uh, the first thing I want to note, and this, you know, most of what you said, I, I'm polar opposite. I disagree with almost everything <laughs> you said. <laughs> 
Okay. So I'm going to go in order of the things I loved. Number one, the, the, the shining point of this movie is the editing. And the bizarre, quirky choices they made and how it was all over the place. Right off the hop, when the baby was dropped and it went like bird's eye view and you saw the baby slowly falling yeah. onto the floor, I was like, this movie's going to be amazing. At the beginning, when I saw these things, I thought it was going to be amazing too. The entirety of the childhood, like when he was, what, 10 years old or, or younger, I thought the movie was incredible, but then it just dropped off for me. When Zach got hit by the car, uh, that first of all, one of the best getting hit by car scenes I've ever seen in my life, because you always see it coming. Always. Mm -hmm. And this movie did not do the very wide shot of the street where he walked out where you knew it was, it was very quick and funny. And then slow motion, you just saw him go... And then, the, uh, again, the slow motion, like, drunken brawl at Christmas with the opera music playing. Like, everything that this movie decided to do creatively, for me, worked wonders. I loved the, the, the random, crazy assortment of editing tactics. I really, really did. I agree with you, uh, I think, of one point, and it is the acting. The acting in this movie was amazing, specifically between Zack and his father, and even more specifically, the father himself. So captivating to watch, so believable, as this man who can't understand... It's not like he doesn't want his son to be gay. It's that he genuinely believes he's not and he's brainwashed. And mm -hmm. it's it's just very interesting and obviously a horrible, uh, you know, opinion and, and, and lifestyle to, to live and have. But he just was so convincing and interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I loved it. Loved it. I'm glad we can agree on that one thing. <laughs> It was a simple premise, coming of age story over over 20 years and, and this boy just wanting to be what, like his brothers and wanting to have his father's acceptance while like slowly decaying and starting to hate himself because he's not those things. And no matter how much he lies to himself, he can't be those things. It's something we've seen before, but maybe not over the course of 20 years. Mm -hmm. So that was cool. I think the script did a very good job of never allowing you to hate Zack's character, even when he was at his most repulsive and horrible and, and, and shitty. Because we as an audience were always given the luxury of seeing what drove him to that point first, instead of a film sometimes justifying it after. We got to watch what brought him there first. So you always have pity and forgiveness for the stupid choices he makes. I also think that the script had really, really beautiful dialogue. When he's like, you know, I just want to be like everybody else. And the dad was like, thank God you never will be. Like, that's an amazing line. Yeah, um, no, I love that line. That's an amazing line. And one of the funniest lines when his brother was like, man, I don't curse anymore. I don't drink or smoke. Fuck, I left my bag of weed at the pub. <laughs> <laughs> that is a brilliant line of dialogue. The ending, watching a father hug all of his sons after one of his son's funerals, mm -hmm. they made into this really intense, like I couldn't breathe waiting for him to get to Zach, wondering what he was going to do, thinking there's, he's not going to hug him. And then he didn't hug him. Ooh. And then he grabbed his shoulder and brought him back in for a hug. Derek, I burst out in tears. Oh, oh. I water I, I fountained out well. of my eyeballs. <laughs> oh. Because as soon as he just shook his hand and he started leaving, I'm like, oh, I was broken. I was a broken boy. And then he grabbed him and, and then they both just started crying and hugging oh, no. each other tighter. And then it cut to the mom who was, oh my God. That all being said, I do agree that the weird, like, healer slash uh, ESP store or whatever that is, I agree that that stuff didn't really have a place unless they should have made that matter in the end, and it never yeah. did. I think this is, like, Quebec cinema at its... I think this is cinema at its finest. Like, I think it was so oh. well done. I really, really, really... I know that's a, that might be exaggerating. I think it was really, really well done. A true testament that uh, some, you know, low-budget French-Canadian movie can go do amazing things. It also won, like, so many awards. So mm -hmm. you just, you're wrong, man. It's, a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the story. I give it a 9 out of 10. Almost perfect. I am surprised. When you started and you said that you didn't like it, uh, I was surprised. I thought you were also going to like this one. I probably would raise it a point, maybe even two points if I watched it again. It deserves a rewatch from what I'm hearing from you and, and how I feel about it. I like that I can do that to you though with Tusk and this. I kind of not changed your mind, but opened your mind to the possibility. 100% and that's what this is all about. I mean, that's yeah. what it should be all about. People in the comments. Yeah! <laughs> Up until you gave your review, I thought that everybody would enjoy this movie, and now I'm questioning my own opinion about things. Well, I'm questioning mine too, so I think we're doing our <laughs> job right. Let's hear what Derek thought about I've Heard the Mermaids Sing. All right. I'm not even going to beat around the bush with this one. This movie's garbage. Okay, hold on. <laughs> That's so objective and unfair, but okay. <laughs> this movie, I did not like a lot.
the first thought I had when the movie finished, I was like, how is this part of TIFF's Canadian top 10 movies of all time? How? I just didn't understand. Seeing as I've already given you the, the idea that I hated it, let me tell you the few all things. Right. Let me sprinkle in some, some niceties. I commend the effort. <laughs> That's what I liked about it. It's charming in its effort. Uh, the writer, director, and editor are all the same person, so that's awesome. Oh. I know that feeling, you know? Like, I've been through film school. I've, I've funded independent shorts, and I've done that before, so I get it. <laughs> I guess that wins a point on my scale. Sheila McCarthy, your ex-teacher. I think she played her role very well. She'll be happy to hear that when I tell her. <laughs> Please don't tell her anything else other than that. No, no, no. I won't share this video. I'm just going to be like, we watched it. You were so good, Sheila. I mean, you can tell it was bad, too. Who's she to me? Anyway, um, the role of the daydreamer, the role of the naive artist, the role of uh, sweet innocence. I think she played that so well. Unlike what I thought about the narration in Crazy, the narration in this one had motivation. She was giving a confessional. She was taping herself. So it was pertinent to the story and had a place in the plot. And I enjoyed that. I liked it. Everything about this movie was low budget. And you can tell. You can tell. And like I said, I commend that in, in most aspects. But in a lot of aspects, because everything is low budget, the film suffers. The set just looked like flats put up and painted and people filled the, the space with furniture i know it was filmed in 1987 but um whatever camera they were using or whatever quality they were putting through the camera it just looked like a tv movie the music what was with the music um, oh spoiler into my review that's one of my only good things about the movie was the music oh no i didn't like it at all I didn't like it. it. It felt like it was like a toddler with a xylophone just playing music. Yeah, man. No, 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 no. I know it was supposed to be quirky and maybe match the vibe of what we were supposed to be watching, but like, no, nah, it was garbage. I didn't like it at all. <laughs> oh, the actress who plays Gabrielle, her acting was atrocious. Atrocious. Yep. Abysmal. Abysmal. Did not like her acting at all. Story was incredibly boring. There was nothing about the story that was exciting or made me want to find out what happens next. It's just like if a really boring person made Devil Wears Prada. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With art instead of fashion. No, 100%. Yeah. I liked the fact that it deterred into her, into her daydreaming sequences, like when it went all black and white. Like I liked how we got inside of her head sometimes. However, the sequences we were given had no relevance to the story or plot. And it would have been so much better if they did. Like, whatever was going on in her life right now somehow translated into her daydream. Aside from Sheila McCarthy, everybody sounded like they were reading from their script just 30 seconds prior when the cameras weren't rolling. They were learning their lines just then. There's a message here about artistic integrity and identity that's just dragged down by the overall quality of the film. I mean, it's not the worst thing I've seen, but I gave it a 3 out of 10. Yeah, that checks out. What did you think about the movie, man? What did I think about the movie? Not a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I agree with you. For this to be on the top 10 movies uh, coming out of Canada at TIFF is outrageous to me. Because even looking at the top 25 Canadian movies or whatever, there's so many more that uh, deserve to be above this movie. I get that this was art. And I get that it was quirky and different and unique and, and refreshing. And it, it was. It was all of those things. And it was even relatable in, in, in some aspects in terms of her character. But it just did not work for me. I love Sheila McCarthy. I can't call her a friend, but I know her in real life. And I can't wait to tell her I watched this. I was so worried. Like, a part yeah. of me was going to watch this. And if I didn't think she did a good job, I was never going to talk to her again. Like, not, <laughs> not out of hate just because I don't talk to her now. But I want to reach out to her now and I can I can do that and not have to worry about lying but yeah she was a stereotypical clueless kind of gal she did a great job with it but you were just kind of always hoping she doesn't embarrass herself or make the wrong decision and she kind of just always did and it was rinse and repeat <laughs> I was just hoping for more of a tonal shift at some point some form of growth we got it kind of at mm -hmm. the end but it seemed so cookie cutter because you know her boss without knowing it was her work kind of shat all over her work she's like this is trite this is bullshit this is garbage when she heard this from Gabrielle or whatever her her that was the best acting in the movie that was the best bit it was just so relatable like we've all felt that pain of somebody kind of just insulting you without knowing they're insulting you and it it god that was good I would give that one part of the movie the word good they kind of fucked that up and gave it a cookie cutter ending where all of a sudden Gabrielle was just like oh, oh wait I th these are good 
like what the fuck <laughs> it made that one bit which i considered the best part of the movie completely uh, moot yeah i hate when things become moot moot sucks man moot sucks moot get the boot <laughs> a boot the moot get the boot a boot the moot get the boot <laughs> I like that. But yeah, Gabrielle sucked as a character and an actor. I agree with you. I really enjoyed the soundtrack. I thought it was fun and jarring in a weird way. Like half the time I was just like, it was like jump scares almost. <laughs> I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't checking out of this movie quite frequently. Mm -hmm. It was only an hour and 20 minutes and it felt longer and more boring than that. I can, however, unlike you, see how this movie has the following and the, the appreciation that it has. I ain't gonna be part of that bandwagon, that's <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I gave it a four out of ten. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't even feel like I liked this more than you, actually, now that we've talked about it. So maybe I have to drop to a three as well. Maybe my bias for Sheila is just pumping it up to a four. But yeah, I, I didn't like this. I wouldn't recommend this to anybody, and I wouldn't ever watch this again. <laughs> <laughs> I think because you liked the music, that's that gives it a point higher than mine. There you go. There are plenty of other good Canadian films, and we're going to get into that right now. Whoa, this guy with the fucking Segway. Oh, Segways? Whoa! <laughs> Let's do it. Our top five Canadian films of all time. We've come to the end of July 8th, and we're going to finish it off with this list. Brody, would you like to go first? My top five Canadian-made movies of all time are as follows. Number five, The F Word. Never seen it. It's very rare that a movie not about romance or comedy would make a top five of mine. Rom-coms, to me, only thrive in the rom-com genre, if that makes sense. But something about The F Word stood out as original and different and fun. Number four, and I know you're going to agree with this one, I'm giving it to Crazy. <laughs> It'd be crazy if a nine out of ten didn't make my top five. That's list, right, so. actually very fair. Fair, yeah. Number three. So I'm going to say this is 3A and 3B because I count both of them as the same movie. And that is FUBAR 1 and FUBAR 2. Oh, yes. I almost put those on my list. Almost. I don't even know if these movies are good still. We watched these a lot in our late teens, early 20s sort of era. And it was, they were good then. Number two. And you know I love this. It's made my list before. Bon Cop, Bad Cop. Hey, number two. Number one unequivocally no bars held or whatever that expression is goon goon is number one goon is the best canadian movie ever made no way goon is the best canadian movie ever made you're a goon get out of here uh, come on man you're a goon get out of here goon, goon's incredible it is a perfect comedy uh with heart and romance quotes out the wazoo I'm very surprised that one movie didn't make your list. I hope you have a very regretful moment when I list it. That's, I don't that's what I'm regret. hoping for. You don't I regret. Up. <laughs> and when I look at you, I throw up. <laughs> I feel like that's a dumb thing to say. Just a little tangent here. Everybody regrets. If you don't regret, you're lying to yourself. Obviously, I was just being a dick. I know, I know, I know you are, but I'm saying in general, people are always like, well, I don't have regrets because if I didn't do those things, I wouldn't be where I am. Shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. You have regrets. Everybody does. We're human. Yeah. How about you listen to Derek? Yeah, and listen to this. My top five Canadian movies of all time. Here we go. Number five, Saw. Oh. Saw is the best of the franchise, first of all. And one of the best twists I've ever seen in a movie ever. And it deserves top five. Number four, Bon Cop, Bad Cop. If you still haven't seen that movie, watch it. How many times do we have to tell you how good it is? <laughs> Number three, Goon. <laughs> you fucking joker. <laughs> Fantastic movie. You're totally right. Heart, comedy, violence. Leave Schreiber. <laughs> Number two, the remake of Stephen King's It. Do me a favor and edit away from me mouthing Resident Evil that whole time. <laughs> Resident Evils aren't good movies. They can't make my list. No, no, we love them, but no, they aren't. Um, yeah. What did you, what, what, what did you say? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the remake of Stephen King's It filmed largely where I used to live, actually, which is great. Yeah. And my number one Canadian movie of all time, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Oh, that is the best Canadian movie ever. 
it's filmed in Canada and the movie actually takes place in Canada with a lot of Canadian references and jokes. I'll uh, I'll ax the F word for Scott Pilgrim. I'm okay not putting Saw on my list, which feels dirty, but I, it would be my <laughs> sixth for sure. I loved this month. It was fun to actually, even though not all of the movies we watched were winners, it's fun to watch movies we wouldn't otherwise. I've never heard of a lot of the movies we watched this month and I had a lot of fun with all of them. So That's why we do it. We will bid adieu, or sorry, au revoir, to July, eh? And what are we going to be moving on to? You want to tell everybody what the theme is next month, Dan? I sure do. I'm so excited. Last year, <laughs> August came around, and we watched movies that were the bottom of the list on IMDb. So we dubbed it Awful August. This year, we're going to take a look at the top of that list and call it Awesome August. We're so smart and clever. Yeah, I bet you didn't think of that one. What we are doing with Awesome August was I went on IMDb's top 100 movies and I went through every single one Derek and I have not seen. As film buffs, as people who love this shit, there's so many we haven't seen yet. Yeah, we've missed out. Uh, We've missed out on a few. (laughs) And I'm very excited about even the ones I don't want to see, I want to see. We know what we have to do right now. Mm. And that is for me to stuff my hand inside the hat of destiny. Let's go. Let's go. Let's I'm go. just going to show everybody. I didn't use sticky notes this time. See, he took one of his regrets and he learned from it. I don't regret things. <laughs> Liar! First movie we're going to watch in awesome August, one of the top 100 movies of all freaking time, is going to be... <laughs> we're st- Whoa! What? Lawrence of Arabia. Whoa! Lawrence of Arabia. Let me just write that down so I remember. Lawrence of Herlabia? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. That's exactly what it is. This is going to be a good Um, month. Lawrence of Arabia, the story of T.E. Lawrence, the English officer who successfully united and led the diverse, often warring Arab tribes during World War I in order to fight the Turks. No, I didn't. I thought this was going to be like, you know, uh, Moses. (laughs) <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be something that's definitely not up my alley, but okay. <laughs> I did. By the way, it's three hours and 40 minutes. Holy shit. Okay, that's going to be a two-parter for me then. We are going to be better cinephiles after this month is over. As per usual, if you enjoyed this content, if you had fun with us, because we had fun with you, if you want to see more, please like, follow, subscribe. All of that stuff means the world to us and helps us reach our dreams of doing this forever and always and always and ever. So stick around and just tell us you love us. That's We just need the reassurance, okay? Yeah! <laughs> bye. Bye. See ya. See you next time. Bye.